In medical news tonight, new research is showing a link between gum disease and Alzheimer's. Our senior health correspondent Monica Robbins explains. There are now several studies linking bacteria associated with periodontal disease to Alzheimer's. The latest from the Forsyth Institute links the plaque on your teeth to the amyloid plaque in the brain, a hallmark of Alzheimer's. Researchers found oral bacteria can travel from the mouth to the brain, and gum disease causes changes in brain cells. The cells meant to defend your brain from amyloid plaque. Another analysis by the National Institute on Aging suggests the bacteria that causes chronic inflammation, such as gum disease, are associated with the development of Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. People will start to seek help when they start to get more forgetful, especially when their independence is starting to get affected. Uh, and forgetfulness seems to be the first line. But, for example, with vascular, um, you will see all of a sudden there is a stepwise decline with the patient where they were so independent and now needing more help. So if you needed another reason to brush, floss, and see your dentist, this is it. Also, an update on the new medication approved last week for early onset Alzheimer's. The AHEAD study, which is the clinical trial that studied lecanemab, or lecembi, is now looking to see if the drug can effectively delay or prevent Alzheimer's if it started before any symptoms appear. The study is now recruiting people as young as age 55 who are at risk for Alzheimer's, and both Cleveland Clinic and University Hospitals are participating locations. So eligible participants are healthy adults between ages 55 and 80 who have not been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And the AHEAD study is a four-year clinical trial. It requires participants to go through physical exams, memory and thinking tests, PET scans, MRIs, and a once or twice a month IV infusion of either Lakembi or a placebo, Russ. Okay, Monica, now that this drug has been approved, how do patients get it? And how can they afford that hefty price tag? Yeah, that price tag is something else. So patients who may qualify should talk with their health care provider. They will need to be referred to a specialist. Now, Medicare will cover the majority of the cost, but patients will be on the hook for about 20%, and that tallies out to about $5,000 out of pocket a year. And that may be very difficult for many who, on average, make about $30,000 a year who are on Medicare. And we have yet to hear if supplemental insurance will pick up any of the costs. So it's still a wait and see, Russ. Yeah, a lot of questions remain. Okay, Monica Robbins in the newsroom. Thank you.